Alberto, thank you so much indeed for joining us this afternoon. Um, Alberto, the first question that I have for you is, we've now finished the market design. So according to what we heard this morning, the electricity market is now in a good direction. What needs to be done next? Well, it needs to be implemented. What we have um, achieved with the clean energy package, uh, we have a change in paradigm. We are going to decarbonize um, the, the economies. Um, that means transformation of the energy sector. We have uh, new players coming into the market. We have, we have to not only provide a good deal for consumers, but also engage them, empower them. Uh, we need their help to also um, manage the increased penetration of renewables in the energy system. So I think we have a lot of, of, of uh, still a lot of work to do. Uh, we are s we're still implementing the third package, the network codes. And uh, we've heard also this morning that, you know, precise and timely implementation of the rules across the union is essential because the third package is the, is the basis for the, the new rules in clean energy package. And in any case, it would be a no regret set of measures um, to sustain uh, the energy sector for the future. So I think, you know, it's maybe on the electricity sector, the kind of rules that we have now in place are sufficient to manage the transition, at least for the next 10 years, but we need to implement them. And, um, you know, it will be quite, quite some work to do. Are you happy with the way that they're being implemented by the member states? I think we've seen benefits being delivered to consumers uh, over the last years. If we look, for example, at the benefits of uh, market, uh, market coupling in the day-ahead market, which has been probably the flagship um, measure, the flagship development in the energy sector, um, we are currently um, providing, delivering around 1 billion euros um, every year to consumers just by using the infrastructure better, not by building new infrastructure or making more, infra more of the capacity available, but just making sure that electricity goes in the right direction. Um, we've looked this morning, we've seen this morning uh, price convergence in the gas, mar in gas sector uh, with um, sourcing costs becoming closer and closer in a on a wider regional basis. Again, the estimates of the agency um, indicates around 750 million euros per year in terms of benefits achieved across the union. So I think, you know, I think we can be content of what has been achieved. Obviously, the work, as I said, is not finished yet. We have major issues with uh, remedial action, the increased cost of remedial action. We have issues with loop flows. We have issues with the uh, level of capacity which has actually been available to the market, uh, been made available to the market in the electricity sector. Uh, I think the, we, in the, on the gas side, I think we've uh, probably, uh, for the current paradigm, I think uh, we have um, succeeded. There are still some markets which are not yet competitive to the extent that we would like them to be competitive. They're not yet. We don't see, we still, uh, we still see a lot of concentration, but I think the rules are there. We need to implement them. And, uh, and, but then for the, for the gas sector, it's uh, now the challenge of the next paradigm. So, okay, let's talk about that next paradigm. So the gas market design, um, we've heard this morning, this is going to be the next big thing of the commission and it's going to cover regulation, it's going to cover standardization, it's going to push competition to the next stage, and it's going to make a big step forward with creating the market conditions for sector coupling, helping hydrogen and gas and biofuels, etc. everything compete. So what does ESA want from this? Well, first of all, we want to uh, put in place the conditions for increased competition and security supply, but then this is already under the current paradigm. I think going forward, we need to recognize the different role that gas would have in the medium term and the long term. In the medium term, gas and natural gas, including, uh, might support the penetration of renewables. In the longer term, if we look at um, you know, a totally decarbonized economy, clearly natural gas as we know it now would find it difficult to have a role. But then we have gas infrastructure, which might help uh, with, uh, with this um, transition by being used, for example, to carry, uh, to transport other types of gases, decarbonized gases, etc. So I think we have to recognize, and the, the, the longer term perspective obviously needs to be 
built or, or you, you start, you need to start building it already now. So I think what I would, what I would like to see is basically these two perspectives being merged into a pathway which can deliver the first while preparing for the second. Great, thanks. Um, you've had a very distinguished career. Um, you've been a great president or chair or whatever it is. Of director. ASA, director of ASA. Um, as you move on, what is the main things you would like to see for ASA over the next five years? Well, the Clean Energy Package has given ASA new responsibilities. I think um, at a time where uh, the energy system in Europe is becoming more integrated and it's very difficult to see how this can be regulated or monitored at a national level. So I think it was inevitable somehow. There, there, there was a debate in the past whether ASA should become a European energy regulator. In name it is not, but I think at least for what it comes, what it um, relates to uh, wholesale markets and what I would call horizontal networks, the networks that allows exchange of um, electricity and gas. We do need a European regulator. And I think the Clean Energy Package recognizes this. ACER is not only now providing decisions as a last resort when national regulators cannot agree, but also intervenes uh, you know, directly and take decisions on European-wide or, wide re or widely regional uh, issues. There has been, however, one aspect that has uh, has been a problem uh, for ESA all along, and it's its resources. Uh, ESA has been given since its um, um, establishment. ESA has been given a, an increasing mandate, a wide increasing mandate, and not just by the clean energy package, a bit by the infrastructure regulation, but remit remit the regulation on wholesale energy market integrity and transparency. Open a new chapter in in agents in in energy regulation in Europe, uh, which. It's a, it's a monitoring framework which is unprecedented not only in Europe but worldwide. You know, the only comparators is FERC in the US. Um, we work quite closely with FERC. Um, FERC is monitoring the US market. We used to have the rule of three with FERC. FERC used to have three, three, uh, three times more resources that we had. I uh, have just learned that now we have the rule of 10. Wow. FERC has 10 more people to do the same job. Now, sometimes I joke with them and say, I don't think you are so much more inefficient than we are. Well, they can give you some of theirs. <laughs> well, they gave us. <laughs> we had two secondees from FERC um, that um, stayed with us. Actually, they were supposed to stay with us six months. They ended up staying 18 months. Um, we work very closely. We exchange uh, sort of experience. But obviously, you know, there is a limit to what we can do. And I cannot believe that we do what we do with the resources we have. But obviously, you cannot do what you're expected to do effectively if you only have a fraction of the resources that are needed. So I think this is what I would hope for, uh, for, 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 for the agency in the future, that finally it is recognized um, that um, it, needs more, it needs more resources. And the benefits of this, it's clear. I mean, it's probably one of the best investments um, if you think, as I said, the, okay, the, the, the market coupling, we didn't deliver ourselves. But now it, the agency is tasked with setting the rules for most of the processes uh, for the internal market in electricity and gas. Uh, market surveillance, also market surveillance. Um, last year, FERC, last year we've seen the first fines being imposed in Europe. There was one in October, five, five million in France. Um, Ofgem in, the, in, in Great Britain announced last week uh, 2.1 uh, million uh, pounds as a, as, as a fine for, um, for, for market manipulation. So the, the benefits in terms of detecting and eventually deterring market manipulation are obvious, and they pay so many times more. Uh, FERC last year imposed fines, I think in the region of 60, 70 million uh, dollars and recovered or disgorged unjust profit in the region of 50 or 60 million. So you see, I mean, with, with, with a, a good year, let's say like this, you pay remit operation in Europe for probably a decade. So I think this is what I hope for the agency that, because I think the agency is technically capable to meet the challenge, but without the resources, it would be impossible. Alberto, thank you very much. And congratulations once again for all the work you've been doing. And thank you it's for inviting me here today. Thank you. Thank you.